So this here is the hose off the spare engine. And it's leaking right in this area. I can't tell other than it's coming from somewhere up here. I think it's an O-ring connection, as you can see here. So I can't imagine the O-ring linking. I'm thinking maybe this pipe is. It's just that soft aluminum. So maybe you got uh, a hairline crack or something in it. Uh, either way, I can't tell for sure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rig this. I'm gonna try to plug one end and hook up my air compressor to the other. See if we can do a pressure test on it. See if this one's gonna work. Then we'll go ahead and start pulling the car back apart. And uh, I doubt I'm gonna record that. I think I'm just gonna start tearing it off. And then once I get it tore down so we can see it, I'll uh, pick up the video there and show you what we gotta do. But yeah, that's too bad. We were so close. Uh, all we had left to do was power steering, add power steering fluid, uh, bleed the air out, add, uh, we added brake fluid. Um, oh, do a vacuum test on the cooling system, then add coolant, check the oil, and give it a run. Oh, put batteries in it. That's how close we were. <laughs> I almost contemplated on starting this up just to see if the engine's going to work, but my concern is I don't want to burn up that pump because and that this is the oil that it calls for the power steering and it's not cheap so um i picked up a case of it from rock auto because you got three turregs but uh i'm gonna need some for the white one when i pull the motor out <clears throat> i don't reuse it i might try it because it's the second third time i've done it on the white tureg so i might that probably is clean enough to transfer to a clean container but we'll see um yeah so i'll uh, touch back base base with you once i get the car tore apart and the engine sitting down i'm hoping i don't have to pull it all the way out i'll just have it sitting on a pallet and lift up the car get it from the side so we'll see all right let me get at it see how quick i can do this all right so like i said i didn't record us anything of me dropping it um i just scrambled to do it as quick as i could so I got the rear transmission cross member still attached and bolted to the subframe. All I did was take out the four, let's see, six forward subframe bolts, which actually there's two, four sub subframe bolts and two engine mount to the frame bolts. And then I set it all down, the car and everything onto the pallet and then slowly jacked up the body of the car. And that just barely gave me enough room. I already got it off, but what I did was I was able to drain or filled up the hose, supply hose from the reservoir tank. And then uh, see if I can focus in on right there. Okay, so there's a pipe that connects to there. I filled up the hose just a little bit and it started dripping out from the bottom bolt hole there around that area. So I said, okay, definitely got a leak there. Now, I never removed this pipe. Let me take you out and see what I found. So I'm guessing when they did the engine swap on the 2006, transferred the pump and the pipes all over. All right, see if I can get this outside just because this is the pipe that I took off. This is the one off the engine that hasn't been tampered with. So the O-ring had a little deformation, not a lot. This is the one I'm probably gonna replace it with. But if you notice, it's very slight. Try to get this to where we can focus. The one on the right, if you notice, is slightly deformed it's almost like an egg shape and the o-rings isn't snug all the way around it this one appears to be perfectly round again there's two number 10 bolts that holds this to the side of the power steering pump don't know if i'll be able to get that top bolt back in it was quite the struggle to get it out but we'll give it a try so this is i think where we were leaking our fluid my plan is to put this other one on from the other car or from, actually it's the original one for this 2004 because they never did an engine swap on it. 
I'm thinking they pulled that out and mushroomed it or deformed it slightly and that's causing it to where we're not getting a good seal. So I'll still double check, see if I got another O-ring that might replace that one. If I do, I'll go ahead and replace the O-ring and get this pipe on there and do a, a test of this line, see if we're getting any leaks. Hopefully that's it and we bolt it back up. Talk about that. I mean, I didn't even think about looking. Never, I never pulled it off, so I never thought I'd have a problem. Never even touched the bolts. And they were snug. But as soon as I uh, put fluid in the reservoir tank, or my son put fluid in the reservoir tank, it started dripping out quick. All right, so let me, I'm gonna clean up this one, look for a new O-ring and see if I can get this back on there without uh, having to pull. Cause there's a turbo uh intake pipe or is it the maybe it's the intercooler pipe from the turbo i gotta look at it again um but one of the turbo pipes is right there um blocking that top bolt to get a good straight angle in so i use the quarter inch drive number 10 socket with a swivel joint um and just barely got it out loose enough for me to use my fingers to work it all the way out all right Fortunately, there's no way for me to record this. So. so, after changing out the pipe, we still had a leak. So I ended up pulling the motor completely out of the car, as you can see here. And what I found was, even though it snugs up the lower bolt here, let's see if I, right there, that lower bolt, uh, the threads have been stripped out of there just enough to where if the pipe is bumped at all, it works it loose. So we're going to do a thread repair job on it and, uh, see if that will hold good enough. It's the suction side. It's not like it's under pressure, but we need it to seal enough to where it doesn't leak. All right. So let me get this thread, thread repair done. So I got the thread repair done. Let's see if I can get in there. There's that lower bolt. There's the upper. Uh, something, I don't think I was too careful when I was moving my engines around and that might've got bent. Uh, so what I ended up doing, grab this pipe here, is I just would install this. Um, and then makes make some bends to my piping as I needed it. Uh, the way it's designed, and I'll show it on the other one, but here you can kind of see it. The bolt holes are side uh, to this towards this, the side of the pipe hole. So any there's no direct pressure. It's kind of transferred pressure, I guess, for a better term. Um, so any flex in the pipe, if I go and bend this pipe back and then push it in. You'll, we, number one, those bolts probably don't hold, the threads don't hold it. And then you're deforming the face of this and it doesn't take much to leak. It's not under pressure, but obviously I'm gonna take responsibility um, that it might've been my not paying attention and being extra careful around that pipe. Cause I just never, I mean, I don't think it's a good design. If you look at it straight on, the bolts to the left, I'll pull out the other pipe and show it to you what I'm talking about. Let's see what I do with it. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. The hole is here and both bolts are on this one side. Ideally, you typically expect to see bolts counter of each other opposite. So it pulls, puts direct pressure uh, around the pipe. Um, obviously this works, but you gotta be careful because any flexing of the pipe you can deform it and cause a leak. So that's what I think would happen. Part of it. That one's obviously deformed, so it might have been deformed before me. I got this other one on there, made sure it was fitting. 
Then I filled up the whole pipe here with power steering fluid. As you, I guess, to be correct, I'm using this here. So, Pentason CHF202. I believe this is what Volkswagen calls for. You can see, filled it up and no leaks. So I'm checking this connection. This is my pressure line coming out with that little bit of blue paint. And then that bottom connection is this supply line. So before, even just filling the tube up with a little bit of oil, I'd get it dripping off of the bottom of that lower bolt there. Uh, so I had it in here for five, 10 minutes now. I have no oil dripping, put a rag underneath it. So if I didn't see something, I'd see it on the rag and there's no staining on the rag. So I think we got it fixed. And I highly recommend before you put your engine back in to fill this up. You know, you don't have to fill all the way up, but at least put, I put half of that container in um, all the way and just let it sit. If, if this is gonna leak, you'll see it right away. You don't need half a tank, probably just a quarter of a, container and you'll start seeing the drip so it's a lot easier to catch it now before you put it back in the motor get the engine back together <laughs> and bumper and the whole front of the car on and then start putting fluids in and say oh man got a leak so did some adjustments um and now i think we'll uh i gotta put this pipe back on put this pipe on finish it up and we'll push it back into the car all right all right I got the power steering figured out. Hopefully we don't have any leaks. And uh, rerouted some of the wiring on the back of the harness, on the back of the engine, just cause it was a little tight there. I think I routed it the wrong way. I went below a bracket. This time I just rerouted so it sits on top. It looks a lot better. You can actually see it kind of sticking up there. Um, so that looks better. Keep an eye out, hopefully we don't start leaking anything. But, uh, I just got it rolled underneath there and uh, I'm going to have to put a jack underneath the transfer case and lift that up above the exhaust and get it lined up. And first thing I do is stab that drive line because it's got about an inch and a half, inch, inch and a half stub coming off of it. And if you don't, then you're going to be fighting it. So if you can get that lined up and then uh, set your rear cross member bolts, transmission cross member bolts. Um, don't tighten them down just have them to where they're holding that back end up and then just work your way forward I think last time I got the two rear subframe and then worked on the engine mount and subframe on this side and then worked on this one so um, yeah probably won't record too much of this getting it set back in there um, it's just one of those things the best thing to do is work from the drive line forward you got to set your exhaust in make sure it's lined up have the couplers on there so they slide right in, stab the drive line, put a couple bolts in the drive line at least so it doesn't come back out, um, and then work your way forward. Transmission cross member bolts, rear subframe bolts, engine mount bolts, cross member, and the front cross member bolts will be your last set. So this one was, the, the subframe lift makes it very challenging on this one, but, uh, Hopefully I learned from the last one and it'll go a little smoother. And let's see if I can get this put in. I'd like to have the sub, subframe installed before the end of the night, but sun's dropping, it's getting cold. We'll see what we can do. All right, last night I was able to uh, get the subframe bolted in. So I got the jacks out. I just got jack stands underneath so I can button everything up underneath, get the wheels Suspension hooked back up, wheels back on there, and then uh, tighten up the drive line, hook up transmission, transfer case connections. Then we'll drop it back down on its tires and work on the front of the car. So that's where we're at now. I got a fire going over here. Shop's a mess. I'm hoping to get it cleaned up once I get this thing out of here. But engine went in for better than last the first time. Um, kind of go over what I did. I had my pallet jack under there with the pallet. I uh, was not supporting the transfer case or transmission cross member at all, uh, which was actually worked out better for me. So I just let it hang off, but it was up not on the ground. So then I wheeled it back in there, got it into position, 
Then I have a small little floor jack that uh, I put underneath the transmission transfer case area, but with the wheels facing so it would roll back. And I was able to lift the transfer case up above the exhaust, um, lower the car down just enough to get it to where it would reach over there and then push the transmission, the pallet back. And the jack rolled with it. And I was able to hook up the drive line. I didn't hook up the drive line. I just got it lined up, put two bolts in there to keep it lined up while I positioned it in there. Got the transfer or the transmission cross member bolts put on, but not tightened. And then worked my way. I think I did this subframe bolt first just by shifting the back and forth. Actually, no, I was trying to do that first. Then I remembered I put the one engine mount that's all by itself that's not part of the subframe. I bolted that to the frame of the car on both sides, got that lined up, bolted it, snugged it down, not super tight, so everything still had its flex, but that took the weight, some of that weight off of that subframe, and then I was able to jockey it around, get it lined up with the spacers, get this bolt in first, get the far back one on that side in, then I came forward to work on the front subframe. And it worked, came together nice. So uh, again, before you slide your trans engine and transmission all the way back, make sure your drive line's lined up and your steering shaft is lined up. And as you start raising your pallet jack or lowering your car, keep that drive, the steering shaft lined up in the correct position along with your drive line. And then it should go together fairly smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and let's see, I guess I'll put the suspension together as it's warming up in here, get that cold floor warmed up a little bit with the fire. Um, so I'll put the suspension back together and then I'll get underneath and do the drive line and cross member bolts. All right, let's get to it. All right, it's a new day. Uh, I got the motor bolted in, I got the drive line tightened up, all the cross member subframe bolts torqued down. Uh, Transfer case, transmission electronics plugged in, transmission shift linkage attached, uh, exhaust attached, and let's see. Oh, we got the front suspension all bolted back together, everything plugged back in and the wheels on. So we were able to set it down on its wheels. That gets it lower so we can start putting the front together. So my plan is to work from the back so hooking up the computers and the engine harness to the fuse panel and then work my way forward. Uh, there's electrical connections. There's coolant line connections like that one right there. There's air ducting, uh, more electrical, uh, wiring harness, cooling lines, and fuel connections, vacuum connections. Yeah, so I topped off the, after I got my brake lines, attached uh i topped off my brake reservoir and then i opened this one here on the passenger side the outer uh bleeder screw left it open just cracked and then while i worked once fluid started flowing out of there with no air bubbles i tightened it up did the same thing to this it takes a while that's why i just do it while i'm working but it gets the majority of the air out of the system now what we learned on this because has abs they you know, the white one, first one time we did it, I had my son help me breed it, bleed the brakes the old school way. But when we went to drive it, there was hardly any brakes. Because of the ABS module, I'm guessing, um, it's got to get the air out of the ABS module. So there's a program on my scanner, uh, my old scanner and my new one, which will probably be the first time I use my new scanner will be on this one, um, on a way to bleed the brakes. So we'll try to do a good video on that bleeding the brakes on this tour rig. Air suspension failed again on this uh, Lincoln, believe it or not. It works great with two people. Probably works okay with four people, but we loaded the whole family in actually to go test drive a car, all six of us, and not even five minutes down the road, the damn thing went on its bump stops on the rear. The air stayed aired up, but the rear went on bump stops. Just drive me nuts, so... 
I don't want to drive around like that. We got lots of snowy rutted ice and that rear end hangs pretty low. So whether this runs or not, it's getting yanked out of the shop. Link is coming in, getting the air suspension fixed again. to go over what I did we just hooked up the engine harness to the computer and the fuse panel so this one this is for the v10 TDI the v6 only has one pass through right here so on this one I don't know about other models but the 2007 VR6 like I said just one this 2004 and the 2006 that we have have two pass throughs um, so I rerouted the cable it fits a lot better Got it in there, and then there's some cable keepers, two spots here, down here, and up there. If you go into here, I didn't put screws in yet. Try to get it from this angle. You'll have three connections. Let's see, this black one, that white one, oops, and this red one. Um, make sure you reinstall your rubber boot. So I got those all three clipped in. I put some corrosion X on it sealed it up here, got a keeper here, and a keeper down there. And then we'll go around to passenger side. And this one, because it's the V10 TDI, it's got two ECMs. So one of the connections is here, and then the cable continues, and it connects here. Only one side of the can. All right, I ran out of storage on my iPhone, so I had to go back and clear some. Uh, not sure where I left off, but you can see there's on the ECMs, there's two, a connection on each one. You only have to remove the smaller of the two connections, not the bigger one. And then there's this ground wire um, that attaches here. So I'm all connected here. So then I'll work forward. I'll get the fuel lines, vacuum lines, and then uh, any coolant lines on the sides, get my snorkels on, get the air box put back in and keep going. Okay, so once we got the, I put the panel up there just temporarily so I don't reduce the chance of dropping stuff down there. Um, you hook up your O2 sensors over here, vacuum line, the vacuum line back there, O2 sensor. I did the power steering hose to the reservoir. And then uh, my two starter wire and main power wire goes across uh, ground wire. Got those hooked up. Uh, Oh, and then I hooked up this coolant line. Then we put these airbox snorkels down to the turbo inlets, uh, connected the mass airflow sensor. Same thing on this side. It's going to get it really smooth. Connected my AC compressor connection. Um, I'm going to put this cross piece here. There's two bolts on each end, number 13. We'll put those on there, and then I'm going to uh, set my radiator up assembly and connect up my air conditioning lines and then the cooling lines and once we get this set in then we can start putting the front section on um but that's going to be it for this video stay tuned for the next one where hopefully we see if this thing uh runs thanks for watching